Hey horror fiends, this is Dr. Chris with Dread Central's YouTube page. I take another character from the media of television or movies and talk a little bit about where they translate to comic books. Their screen to comic books adaptation, if you will. Today I thought I would do the Lord of the Vampires himself, who has a long history in movies and television, but his comic book appearances are sometimes overlooked, Count Dracula. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail of the backstory of who Dracula was, as we all kind of know him. He is one of the most adapted literary characters into movies or television in history, I believe. I don't think anyone surpasses him. Maybe Sherlock Holmes, but you'd have to do a count for count adaptation of each one of the characters to see who, who tops who, and I believe it is Dracula. But to find out more information about who Vlad Tepes, Vlad the Impaler is, the original Count Dracula, I recommend checking out In Search of Dracula by Raymond, Mc... Raymond T. McNally and Radu Floresco, The History of Dracula and Vampires. It's got a beautiful cover by the late, great Edward Gorey. I highly recommend checking it out. You can usually find it on used bookstores and Amazon or eBay or any of those websites. I don't know if it's still in print or not, but it's a great piece of history to find out more about who the real Dracula was. Now, we all know Dracula the novel was published by Bram Stoker in 1897, and then he was made into a movie starring Bela Lugosi in the 30s, as well as Christopher Lee's film and Gary Oldman's movie, and there was a TV series a couple years ago some people saw on NBC. The version of Dracula has been pretty much the same throughout all of his comic book appearances. One of the earliest appearances that I could find in my research of, of the history of comic books goes back to the old Gold Key comics, The Occult Files of Dr. Spectre, which had a story of Dracula in it. Marvel Comics, when they were Atlas Comics back in 1951, in Suspense Number no. 7, had a version of Dracula in that as well. Their version of Dracula that became uh, very popular and still exists to this very day was created by Jerry Conway and Gene Cullen in Tomb of Dracula number one and then written by R. Wolfman through the through the run of the series. We'll get to that version of Dracula event soon in this review, uh, just because he does have a longer history than any of the other versions. As I said, I'm going to go through the comic book version of Dracula that I'm aware of and touch upon the ones that are also in my own personal collection, so I don't go too far off the rails just because he does have a ton of different appearances. One of the best appearances of Dracula that I was most familiar with growing up was Dracula and Batman Red Rain by Doug Monick and Kelly Jones and Malcolm Jones III. This is a great gothic Elseworlds Batman story in which Batman fights the Count who comes to Gotham City and he himself becomes a vampire. Yes, spoilers, Batman uh, does become a vampire, but that was going to be spoiled by the fact that there are three books and they're all published together and Dracula and Batman is always put on the cover as a vampire. So you're kind of giving that away a little bit when you pick up the trade paperback of these. Um, then the sequel is Batman Bloodstorm, the chilling sequel to Red Rain by Doug Munnick and Kelly Jones as well. And then the final chapter is Batman Crimson Mist. So you have the Batman Dracula story arc right there, which is fantastic, and I highly recommend picking it up. I believe this is collected. Uh, I have seen it collected usually around Halloween. Uh, DC put out a bunch of Batman Elseworlds trade paperbacks recently, so it should still be very easy to find. Another great adaptation of Dracula is The Complete Dracula by Dynamite Entertainment. This had some amazing covers done by John Cassidy, who worked on Star Wars and Astonishing X-Men. Uh, the story is adapted by Lee Moore and John Pepion, with artwork by Colton Worley. This has also been collected, and this is probably, as far as I'm aware, the most in-depth adaptation of the story of Dracula in a comic book. Dracula's appeared in various stories as well over time, and in different people's background character, if you will, or had been mentioned, like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. The character of Mina Murray also appears in that, and with a heavy connection to Count Dracula. 
comic book writer and artist Andy Fish has Dracula's Army. It's a novel that is set within the novel of Dracula. It's a story of Jonathan Harker's journey as a shy university graduate to the fears of vampire hunter he's evolved into. The story is of Dracula's relentless pursuit of his ultimate goal to go to London and muster an army to secure world domination by vampires. It's a really cool, small print graphic novel published by a great indie publisher, indie author. Then there's Atlas Comics, which had Fright featuring the Son of Dracula, a 25 cent comic book from back in the day when comic books were really, really cheap. Your average comic book these days costs anywhere from $2.99 to $3.99. DC's had a big thing about rolling back the price of their comic books to $2.99. Marvel stayed around $3.99 a book. This comic book was published in 1975. Uh, Atlas, of course, as I mentioned earlier, was the publishing company of Marvel before they became Marvel Comics. I found this one at a flea market. Dracula also had a newspaper strip which was collected, breaking down the entire story in each uh, daily newspaper strip that came out. Topps Comic Books had adapted the Bram Stoker's Dracula, the Francis Ford Coppola movie from 1991 into a comic book. Uh, the artwork was by Mike McNola, the creator of Hellboy. It's a beautiful piece of adaptation with uh, great artwork. If you're a huge fan of Hellboy, that's a comic book I really recommend. Going back to Tomb of Dracula, Dracula had been uh, slumbering for quite some time when he's found by his living descendant Frank Drake and Rachel Van Helsing and Quincy Morris. Quincy Harker, uh, he was the son of Mina and Jonathan Harker from the novel, and Rachel was the granddaughter of uh, Abraham Van Helsing, and then... Uh, Dracula had other relatives, I guess. That's how Frank is able to be alive. Um, I know he had a brother, uh, and he has a son, but uh, they don't really go into that much backstory with the character from Marvel Comics. Um, Dracula would be, would be the antagonist of the whole story through the run of Marvel Comics and run into various heroes from the Marvel Universe such as the Wolfman, the Frankenstein Monster, Spider-Man, and even the Silver Surfer, one of the most offbeat issues of the series. One of the most popular characters to spawn out of Drac Tomb of Dracula was Blade the Vampire Hunter, who rose to popularity in the 90s, having appeared on the Spider-Man animated series, and then having his own movies by New Line Cinema, which, uh, which is what really started the whole wave of comic book movies, was in 1990 eight with uh, Blade the Vampire Hunter, or just Blade as it was called. The, the X-Men, Spider-Man, the Hulk, Daredevil, and then the rest of the movies really started to follow. The Tomb of Dracula series, the original novels, are collected in four volumes, The Essential Tomb of Dracula, and in the fourth book you also get the Dracula magazines, which are very hard to find and out of print. They're all in black and white, which I think really enhances the artwork style for, for Gene Cullen, who is the artist on the book. I had a pleasure of interviewing Gene Cullen before he passed away, and one of the last stories he worked on was a, a single issue of Captain America number 601 set during World War II, which Bucky and Cap fight uh, a group of vampires who have turned Nazi soldiers into vampires. Dracula would have his own daughter who would appear in the Marvel Universe off and on called Lilith. Uh, she was kind of drawn in a very uh, Vampirella style costume. Uh, it must have been for the time period as Vampirella was created in the, in the 70s by Forrest J. Ackerman. Dracula and Vampirella have also crossed paths before in her own comic book series by Harris and then later by Dynamite comics, the same people who published the Dracula complete story. Doctor Strange, with the help of the Scarlet Witch, Blade, Frank Drake, and Hannibal King, who was a vampire that was played by Ryan Reynolds in the third movie, but is more akin to Angel in, in the way of being a vampire detective, uh, helped Doctor Strange vanquish the vampires from the Marvel Universe, including Count Dracula. My introduction to Dracula was in an issue of What If, called uh, What If Wolverine Was Lord of the Vampires, 
in one of the best self-contained issues of the Uncanny X-Men, issue 159, and drawn by the amazing Bart Sears, and written by Chris Claremont, Storm is bitten on the neck by Dracula, and no one believes that vampires could possibly exist. Wolverine's been around for like a hundred years, and you're telling me he's never run into a vampire, but uh, Kitty Pride is the only one who believes that Storm has actually been bitten by a vampire, and she puts on a kind of a getup that makes her look like Indiana Jones, and goes out after Dracula. And there's this great scene where he grabs Kitty by the neck, and his hand burns, and he's like, ah, the accursed symbol of the Jews. And because uh, Kitty wear is a, is Jewish and she wears the Star of David around her neck, which would still affect Dracula as it being a religious symbol. And then the X Men follow Kitty and the Wolverine, uh, Colossus, and Nightcrawler do battle with Dracula. And Wolverine tries to make the claw the cross with his claws, and Dracula bats him aside as he mentions that you have to have faith in that for it to work on me. But Nightcrawler, even though he looks like a blue demon, he has he's such a devoted Catholic that he picks up Kitty's stakes and forms a cross from them and Dracula's back in, in complete shock that this mutant, who looks like a hairy, fuzzy elf, could possibly be uh, such a believer in God and Christ. And Nightcrawler makes a point that God loves all of his children no matter what they look like. And it's such a cool moment for Kurt Wagner, Nightcrawler, that uh, you kind of wish type of uh, character would be in the movies. Uh, but it's not. Not really. <laughs> um, and then uh, Dracula would encounter the X-Men's lives one other time. Uh, he finally gets the best of Rachel Van Helsing and turns her into a vampire. And she asks Wolverine to uh, put her out of misery after they stop Dracula. Um, after Dracula would be resurrected along with the other vampires in the Vampiric Versus story arc, because uh, we find out Doctor Strange has a brother, and his brother was turned into a vampire and cryogenically frozen, and you know, there'll be a cure one day, and him coming back causes the Vampiric Versus spell. Uh, it's kind of unclear, and you could probably go hunt down the issues. They're recollecting all of the 90s Doctor Strange comic books. I can't wait, because uh, those were definitely some really uh, black magic filled comic books. In fact, one issue in particular got them into trouble um, for reprinting the cover to make it look like a kind of Elizabeth Bathory, and they ended up using the cover, they ended up using a historical woman who uh, was a slave owner and did horrible things to many people, um, so there was some controversy with that cover, so it's kind of a collector's item, but I digress. Dracula then would appear once again as all the vampires that were wiped out would return. Uh, there was the big Midnight Sun story arc where Frank, J Frank Drake and Hannibal King teamed up with Blade. Dracula would encounter Generation X, which were a group of young mutants, and there was a character called Chamber who had his lower mouth missing, and Dracula would basically try to make a deal with the devil kind of thing with Chamber, saying, you know, I will give you back your, um, you know, your, your handsome physique with your mouth without your energy blasting below you if you, you know, basically give me your blood. During the Curse of the Mutant storyline, Dracula um, was beheaded by his son, and his son took a bomb to San Francisco and blew it up to create a vampire army instantly. Uh, Jubilee, who had been depowered during M-Day, lost her powers and was pretty much just human, but she got affected by this bomb and was turned into a vampire. As the last time I was aware, she was still a vampire, but I don't read all the X-Men comics, so I'm not entirely sure if she is still a vampire currently. Um, there was a miniseries called X-Men 92, which was recently cancelled, and in that, Dracula shows up and turns Jubilee into a vampire again. Um, Dracula's had several animated appearances. He's got this kind of Fabio-looking Twilight look now, with the white hair, ponytail... Um, weird Castlevania-style body armor going on. I'm not sure what Marvel's reasoning is for the design on that. The classic look they've always had, pictured here, has, in my opinion, been the always been the best one. And, of course, it's reminiscent of Christopher Lee and Bela Lugosi. But, I, what do I know? 
Dracula was on Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, and he was in the current Avenger cartoon series on Disney XD. So there you go, guys. Dracula and comic books, kind of a brief overview. There's so much detail involving with the character, but I just wanted to give you kind of the lowdown on, on what you can look forward. I wanted to give you the lowdown on what some of his history is and the other things that he's done. The essential tomb of Dracula has been collected in uh, Tomb of Dracula has been collected in both the essential format as well as a uh, colossal book collecting uh, all of the all of the individual issues. You can hunt those down at your local comic book store and see if they can order them for you. The Batman Dracula uh, three book series has also been collected, so you can try and track that down as well. And Marvel has their own adaptation of the classic. Bram Stoker novels by Roy Thomas and Dick Giordano. Uh, it's collected in hardback and trade paperback, and it's just simply entitled Dracula. But if you want to order it from your local retailer, I'd probably ask them to look up Marvel's Dracula or maybe hunt it down on Barnes Noble, Amazon, or eBay. Uh, as they're your type in Dracula, you're going to come up with a lot of different uh, versions of that title. And then for a fun uh, Dracula Gets His Come Up, it's kind of book. Check out Deadpool the Gauntlet. In it, Deadpool steals Dracula's wife from him and has to team up with Blade the Vampire Hunter. It's a kind of a funny book, and that's why I recommend it. The artwork in it is absolutely superb, and it sets up uh, many plot lines involving uh, Deadpool later on and, and his encounters with Dracula. Thanks, guys, for checking out our YouTube videos here at DreadCentral.com's YouTube page. Also, check out my radio show, Dr. Chris's Radio of Horror, which airs Sunday nights in Worcester, Mass. And look for more videos as we talk, take a character from the medium and how it translates into comic books. It's screened a comic book adaptation and everything in between. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment here on Dread Central's YouTube page.